can everyone who is responsible for violating Britney Spears' right to privacy be thrown in jail? Absolutely. But there's also legal defenses that would apply. So let's break that down. My name is Christopher Melcher. I'm a California attorney and I started my career in criminal defense. And as a defense attorney, it's your job to poke holes and create reasonable doubt. And there's two defenses that we're going to cover in this video. But first, some background. In the documentary Controlling Britney Spears by Liz Day and Samantha Stark, of New York Times that's on Hulu and FX, it was revealed that Britney Spears was under surveillance. Her electronic communications were intercepted and she was recorded. It appears this was done by a security company hired by the conservatorship team. A whistleblower who used to work for the security company provided 180 hours of recordings to Liz Day and Samantha Stark. It's illegal under federal and state law to intercept electronic communications or record those communications without permission. In working on the documentary, Liz Day gave Jamie Spears an opportunity to comment on these allegations. Jamie Spears didn't respond, so he didn't confirm or deny the allegations. If Jamie Spears was involved in this, I'm sure he did not act alone. He's not that sophisticated. This would be a larger operation involving multiple people. If there is a criminal investigation, we'll see people point fingers at each other. Jamie Spears will say that he wasn't involved. He's living in Louisiana. He had nothing to do with anything. The attorneys representing the conservatorship will also deny any knowledge of any recording. Idan Yassimi, the owner of Black Box Security, has already denied any involvement in this. My suspicion is he'll blame the whistleblower and say that that individual did it all on his own. This is why getting those attorney files from the conservatorship council is so vital. It may tell us exactly everyone's role in this operation. I believe Samuel Ingham, the court-appointed attorney for Britney Spears, knew that the surveillance was occurring. In August 2020, Mr. Ingham sent an email to Geraldine Weil, one of the attorneys for the conservatorship, about a new cell phone that Britney Spears was getting. Mr. Ingham wanted assurances from Ms. Weil that there was no monitoring of the communications on that cell phone between Mr. Ingham and Britney Spears. In the email, Mr. Ingham stated, ethically, I need to get written confirmation that no one other than my client can access her calls, voicemail messages, or texts directly or indirectly. That's a really odd email for an attorney to send. There's no way he did that out of the blue. He must have known that her communications were being monitored previously to send that email. And Mr. Ingham also CC'd Idan, the head of that security company. That's also strange. Why would he CC Idan with this email about communications being monitored if Mr. Ingham didn't believe that Idan was responsible for doing the monitoring? The email is also odd for what it doesn't say. Mr. Ingham does not ask for assurances that no monitoring is occurring. He's just concerned about the communications that he's having with Britney Spears. Mr. Ingham should have said, I don't want any communications of my client being intercepted or monitored. Ms. Weil responded by email. She stated, Jamie confirms that he has no access to her calls, voicemail messages, or texts. This is interesting because Ms. Weil went beyond the question that Mr. Ingham asked, and she said there is no surveillance happening at all. That is fantastic evidence, and it brings us to our first defense, which is consent. It's not a crime to intercept a communication or record if you have the person's permission. If Ms. Weil believed that Brittany was aware that her communications were being monitored and had consented to it, Ms. Weil would have said in the email to Mr. Ingham, hey, your client has said this is okay. Why are you asking me about it? But she didn't. And Ms. Weil also says she spoke to Jamie Spears about this which confirms now that neither Jamie nor Geraldine Weil believed that any communications were being monitored. The defense of consent might not even exist anyway because Britney Spears is under a conservatorship. All of her rights have been taken away. How can she consent to anything? The next defense and the one that I'm concerned about is the statute of limitations. That's a deadline for prosecutors to bring charges. It protects the accused 
so that a prosecutor doesn't wait too long to file criminal charges when evidence or witnesses are no longer available. Generally, the time to bring criminal charges is the same as the maximum sentence for that offense. If a prosecution were brought under California Penal Code Section 631 for invasion of privacy, the maximum punishment for that crime is one year in the county jail. And the statute of limitations or deadline to file charges for that offense is also one year pursuant to Penal Code Section 802A. That means that any prosecution under state law for intercepting electronic communications must have been brought within one year of the date of the interception or recording occurred. And some of this conduct sounds like it happened much earlier than that. For some crimes, the statute of limitations is told or delayed until the victim knew or should have known that the crime occurred. And it would make a lot of sense for a crime like this to have a delayed statute of limitations because by its nature, the interception of electronic communications would be unknown to the victim. Unfortunately, under California law, we do not have a delayed discovery rule for tolling the statute of limitations. So it's one year from the date of the intercept or recording that the prosecutor has to file the charges. If the charges are filed after that one year period, it has to be dismissed. But what about federal law? Title 18 of the United States Code, Section 2551, also makes it illegal to intercept electronic communications or record those communications. The maximum punishment for that crime is five years. And the statute of limitations for prosecuting that crime is also five years under Section 3282 of the United States Code. These crimes are investigated by the FBI. We don't have confirmation that the FBI is involved. I believe somebody asked them if they were and they wouldn't comment, which could mean that they are investigating or maybe not. I have to imagine that a report has been made with the FBI by Matthew Rosengard, Britney Spears, or somebody else. What would the sentence be if somebody was successfully prosecuted under federal law for intercepting or recording Britney Spears' electronic communications? Well, we know it's five years per offense and each act of intercepting those communications or recording her would be a separate offense. An indictment or criminal complaint would list each of those separate acts of recording or intercepts as a separate count. And if there were a thousand violations, that'd be 5,000 years in federal prison. Now that's better than a life sentence, but that's not the way it works. When multiple counts are charged in one case, the court will either sentence on those counts consecutively or concurrently. There's very few crimes that carry consecutive sentences, meaning that each count would have its own prison term followed by the next. That's the 5,000 year example. This would be done concurrently, meaning that all of the sentences would run at the same time. Under the federal sentencing guidelines, the court would look at the severity of the crime and past criminal convictions of the defendant as to whether the maximum sentence is available. It is essential that the files maintained by the attorneys who represented the conservatorship for the last 13 years be turned over. The temporary conservator of the estate, John Zabel, who was appointed on September 29th, will be demanding those files. Matthew Rosengart, Brittany's attorney, has confirmed that he wants those files turned over to Mr. Zabel. We're still waiting to see the formal appointment order or letters granting Mr. Zabel the powers of temporary conservator. Once he has those, I am sure he'll be demanding that the files be turned over. And there's really no way to destroy those records and they have to be turned over immediately or the attorneys could face discipline. Mr. Zabel is the holder of the attorney-client privilege for those files, which means that he can turn those over to law enforcement. There is so much left to this story and we're learning more every day. And I love going on this journey with you. I appreciate the support that you've given me in this channel and I'll see you next time.